Bum 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 bum. Tomatoes. Hello, welcome to video four. What is get accurate real time? Let me go ahead and run through a quick little example here, and we're gonna see a couple things. We're gonna see a few physics objects, and we're gonna see a timeline object in my little character. We have a couple buttons. I can adjust by time dilation. We can pause everything. So we go ahead and pause it. You'll see our game pause. Now the accurate real-time node is not affected by pausing or time dilation. It's intended to be a global second counter that basically gives you a way to accurately tell time on your platform. Now there's a couple things here. First of all, the node's called get accurate real-time. This is running on a tick up here. And this is running on tick. If you notice this top number, it's not updating in real time. Second of all, it's not accurate on the Windows platform if you're thinking about this being an epoch time. The accurate real time node gets the platform time seconds variable and then does some adjustment to it based on the platform. In Windows, it's basically getting the an uptime cycle counter from windows itself on the html platform from what i saw it's getting it looks like accurate time and then it's probably adjusted based on whichever platform but it's meant to give you a standardized time uh, progression that you can use for keeping track of things but keep in mind based on your platform it may or may not be literally accurate as you can see here even though i'm updating this every tick you're seeing it wait the time is accurate it's going to be 4, and then after 4 seconds, this will change to an 8. It's just it's only updating at the 6 and the 8, roughly every 3 and 4 seconds. Now your partial seconds is correct. This will count up from 0 to 1 in a fractional value. Let's look at the node itself and then explain in more detail. So the accurate real-time node, if we type in accurate real-time, we'll find it under utilities, get accurate real-time. And when you pull it out, you'll find two parts. The seconds, which is an integer, and then the partial seconds, which is a float. When we run my example, I'm putting the full integer up here and the partial seconds down here. Now, the reason why I said it wasn't necessarily accurate, first of all, it's not in real time, as you can see. This part is in real time. The partial, but the full time is not. But it's not accurate is you would traditionally think this would be something like an epoch time. Basically, it's something from a certain date in 1970 where basically it's the number of seconds that have passed and it can give you an accurate time down to the second as a progression. Unfortunately for Windows it doesn't look like that's correct because when I read through the code it basically doubles the time or divides the time then adds a random number just to give you a finer accuracy. The intention of this is to have a progressive number that is the key that you can count on. So for example this is 17182632. So let's wait for this to get to 640 and stop it. And I'm going to go ahead and stop it. Now I'm going to talk for a second or two. And remember, our number was 640. When I restart the game and we look, we now see it's at 648 and it's counting up. This time is basically you can think of like your system time, but in a single number. So if you use it for that, for example, progression tracking, let's say you have a game where I start building something and it's going to take 300 seconds to build. I can record when in accurate seconds the building started and then I can easily tell when the building is supposed to be completed and just do a comparison. It's not going to give you something down to that fine second granularity. But the nice thing is it's consistent between gameplay. So if you're using a mobile device or some other device where it's not a, uh, the gameplay is not contiguous, you're going to stop. And when they come back, you can just get the current accurate real time, break it apart, and then compare it against anything that you need to, and you'll have a nice consistent amount of time. And this is really useful, for example, on a server because the server time, if you're sending things to your clients remotely, you can count on your server time as being accurate and you won't allow your player to adjust their clock and things like that. That's actually a good question here. I don't know about this. Let's find out. We're running at 724. 
let me go ahead and go to my clock itself and my computer and uh, uncheck set time and let's change this to let's see we had 724 let's just jump it two hours into the future and change it we're now at 11 18 a.m. let's go ahead and run this again we had 724 now we have 744 uh, I'm pretty sure that worked pretty accurately let's see I'm gonna adjust the time in real time here 182754 let's move this back down to 9 a.m. 182760 182760 roughly shut this off we'll go ahead and run this again 182770 so there you go despite the amount of time this looks like it's a decent way of keeping accurate time without your plane or adjusting it it's also useful on a server as you saw or well, as I explained so that's it that's going to wrap up our get accurate real time node I personally have not experienced this name being accurate it is definitely not accurate real time for me depending on the platform it will be different depending on your platform that is something to keep in mind the code itself does do different things to return back different values the one thing you can count on is this node will give you back reliable progressive time on the same platform so keep that in mind